Hello and welcome back to data structures in JavaScript. Today we will be covering linked lists. What are they, why are they useful, and how do we implement them in JavaScript? A linked list is a sequential collection of elements. Each element is called a node and each node has two pieces of information, the data value itself and a pointer that references the next node in the list. The linked list has a head and a tail. The head node points to the second node, which points to the third node, and so on, until we reach the tail node that points to null, indicating the end of the list. To be more specific, what I've just described is a singly linked list, where each node has one pointer to the next node in the list. There are also doubly linked lists, where each node has a pointer to the next node and a second pointer to the previous node. So the doubly linked list has just one more piece of information than the singly linked list. This reference to the previous node in the doubly linked list allows it to be traversed both forward and backward, unlike the singly linked list, which can only be traversed forward. Additionally, just as the tail node has a next pointer to null, in the doubly linked list, the head node also has a previous pointer to null. One real-world application of the linked list might be a music player, where each song is a node in the linked list that has a reference to the next and the previous song. In fact, the music playlist might actually be a special type of linked list called a circular linked list, where the head and tail nodes actually point to each other rather than to null. So why use a linked list to store data at all? Why not just use the built-in data type of an array? Well, the difference between a linked list and the array has to do with how they are stored in memory. Arrays support direct access, while linked lists support sequential access. A true array is allocated in a contiguous block of memory, meaning each element in the array is located right next to each other. Because of this, it's easy to grab any element in the array, whether it's at position 3 or position 100. To get to element 100, you can easily just jump to that position. You don't need to step through the first 99 elements. Linked lists, on the other hand, have sequential access, not direct access. So each element in the list remembers that it's part of a specific order, but unlike in an array, the elements can be stored anywhere in memory, not necessarily right next to each other. Because of this, unfortunately, you can't just jump directly to a certain position in the linked list. To get to the fifth node in a linked list, List, you have to first step through nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is a drawback of the linked list. The huge advantage of the linked list is that because its elements can be stored anywhere in memory, adding and removing elements is much faster than with an array. In a true array, if I wanted to add something to position 2 in a 5 element array, those other elements would have to shift over in memory. Even to add an element to the end of an array, if that block of memory happens to be occupied by something else, that entire array might have to be reallocated in order to keep a continuous block of memory. In a linked list, all you need to do to add an element is just make a new node anywhere that you have space in memory. Then you just point that new node to a node in the list and then have the list point back to it. To delete a node in the list, all you have to do is have the previous node point to the node after it and then break that node's link to the linked list. So while linked lists are really bad at direct access, they're really good at inserting and deleting elements. And this is all because of the way its elements are stored in memory. If you have a very volatile data set that's constantly changing, it may be advantageous to use a linked list because adding and removing elements always takes the same amount of time, no matter how large or small that list is. Now let's look at implementing the linked list in JavaScript. There are lots of different methods a linked list can have, like append, prepend, add at, remove at, element at, index of, <laughs> search, for each. So in the interest of time, we'll just focus on appending, prepending, deleting, and searching. I'll also just review the doubly linked list since that requires a little bit more setup than the singly linked list. So let's declare our classes. We'll have a linked list class and a node class. And let's do the nodes constructor, which takes three parameters. So the data value, the previous reference, and the next reference will initialize this dot value to value this dot previous to the previous reference or null and this dot next to next or null. 
null in these two lines will set a default value of null if a previous and next reference are not given. Now onto the linked list constructor. We will keep track of this.head and this.tail and set them both to null. We'll implement five methods today, so we'll start with append, which adds to the ends of the list. We will prepend, or adding to the beginning of the list. We will have a delete head method, a delete tail method, and a search method. So starting off with append, we will take in a value, and we should consider two cases. So if the list is empty, so if not this dot tail, we will set the head and the tail to the new node with the value passed into it. Otherwise, let's capture the current tail in a variable. So let old tail equal this dot tail, and then we'll set the new tail to the new value. So this dot tail equals new node, then we'll have the old tail point to the new tail, and the new tail point to the old tail. Moving on to prepend, it's a very similar pattern, so once again we'll start by considering if the list is empty. Also let's not forget to pass in a parameter value. So if the list is empty, or if not this.head, once again, we'll set the head and tail to the new node. So this.head equals this.tail equals new node value. Else, we will capture the old head. So let old head equal this.head. We'll set this.head to a new node. We will have the old head point to the new head and the new head point to the previous head. Moving on to delete head, once again let's consider if the list is empty. If there is no head, then we will simply return null. Otherwise, we want to capture the value of the old head and then return it. So let's have a new variable called let remove head equal this dot head, and then we will return the removed head's value. But we are not done yet. We should consider two more cases. So if this is the last node in the list, so there's only one element, and we can indicate that with this.head triple equals this.tail. So if there's only one node left in the list, then we'll set this.head equal to this.tail equal to null. Otherwise, we'll set this.head equal to this.head.next. We want to remove any previous pointer, so this.head.previous equals null. And that's it. So delete tail is very similar. Uh, once again, let's consider the empty list. If not this.tail, return null. Else, we'll capture the value of the tail and return it. So let remove tail equal this.tail, and then return remove tails value. Once again, we'll consider if this is the last node. So if this dot head triple equals this dot tail, then we'll set the head and the tail to null again. Else we will set this dot tail to this dot tail dot previous and then clean up that reference to the next node. So this dot tail dot next equals null. Finally, with search, we take in a value parameter, and when we're traversing a linked list, we want to keep track of which node we're on. So we'll have a variable, let current node 
equal this dot head. So we'll start at the head and then traverse through the list using a while loop. So while we have a current node, if the current node value is equal to the value passed in, we will return that current node. If that value of the current node is not equal to the value, we will move on to the next node. So current node equals current node dot next. If we traverse the entire linked list without ever finding the value, we will return null. And that's it for implementation. Let's test it. So let list equal a new linked list and then let's append something so we'll add some elements to the tail so list dot append one two and three let's look at our list cool this makes sense our head is at one and our tail is at three now let's prepend some things zero and then negative one so now when we look at our list we expect negative one to be at our head and then three to be at our tail so let's take a look at our list this looks good let's do some searching so list.search for one cool it gave us the node with the value of one Let's search for number three. It returns us our node with number three. And then now let's search for something that's definitely not in here. 999, it's returning null. So our search function is working. Let's start deleting some elements. So let's list.delete head. And we expect that to return us negative one list.delete tail and we expect that to return three. Oh boy oh boy what did I do <laughs> uh, cannot set property next of null okay I took a minute and I found my bug <laughs> so it turns out I can't talk and code at the same time because up here I wrote previous instead of prev, so hopefully I don't have that anywhere else. Let's try again. So this is where we left off. Let's try and delete one more time. So we'll delete head and we expect this to return negative one because that is the value at the head node. Let's try to delete the tail. We expect this to return three. So now our linked list, if we look at it, should just have zero through two. Great, so the head is at zero and the tail is at two. Let's try deleting just everything. So now our list should only have one node in it, just number one. So let's delete that last node. That returns one. And if we delete that one more time to an empty list, it should return null. <laughs> We've made it through, guys. In summary, we learned that linked lists are sequential collections of elements called nodes that can be stored anywhere in memory and where each node has a pointer to the next and or previous node in the list. We learned that there are different flavors of linked lists, like singly, doubly, and even circular. If you choose to work with a linked list, you should consider its trade-offs. You are sacrificing lookup speed in favor of insertion and deletion speed. Finally, we looked at implementing linked lists using JavaScript class syntax. And that concludes today's video on linked lists. This is part two of a series I am doing on data structures in JavaScript, so please subscribe so you don't miss the next one and leave a like if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. We'll set this.head and this.tail to the new node. No.